Hey folks, it's Rod. I am in my trusty 76 Ford F-150 going out to do some thrift store shopping. I'm also going to hit up a ReStore. It's Habitat Humanity for Humanity Recycled Building Materials. But they often have other things in there. So I'm going to go in and see what I can find. If anything, then I'm going to hit a few of the local smaller thrift stores. Probably hit the Goodwill. I just recently did some research on women's shirts. I put a list together of about 19, 20 different brands and styles to look for. You can find that at www.winbydoing.com. But I'm going to go ahead and test that research out and see what happens. But I'm sitting here at the post office, just dropped off a couple packages, and now I'm out ready to shop. I will be right back. Okay, folks, I just left ReStore, the Habitat for Humanity recycling store. And I picked up what I think are some pretty good deals. I grabbed, let me see if I can show it here. I've got three. I'm going to flip the camera over. And I guess I can't do that right now. We'll go ahead and see. I've got three of these fire, they're the gun digest books. I've got one from 92, one from, I don't know, the other two are pretty. They're older. Um, I picked those up for 50 cents a piece, hoping to turn those around pretty easily. These games, I got Seen It Sports, Seen It, and a Trivial Pursuit game, the DVD game Pop Culture 2. I picked those all up for $2, $2, a buck and a half. I don't know if you can see those two crates of their National Geographic videos. I picked up both those crates. They were selling videos for 50 cents a piece, but I picked up both of those crates for $25 out the door, which it is, um, I figure there's probably right around 50 or so in there. If I could turn around for, you know, at least two bucks a piece, you know, I should be able to get, turn a pretty good profit. Something I haven't tried yet is tennis rackets. I got this Prince Junior 110 series and a Spalding Smasher with cases. I picked one of them up for $5, the other one for three. We'll see what happens with that. I also picked up this Brookshield Sahara VHS, 50 cents, and Office Home, Student, Home and Student 2007 Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote. It didn't have a price on it, and so she just said three dollars. So, you know, I figured at that price, I didn't think I could go wrong, but we'll see. But that is what I got there. I'm getting ready to go into one of the local thrift stores. The first time I've, I've tried this one, so we'll see what happens. I will be back. Hey, folks, I'm back at the house, and we're gonna go through what I picked up today. I did end up only going to two stores. Like I said, I went to the ReStore, which I don't know if you have them in your area, but it's basically Habitat for Humanity. They, I don't know where, a lot of it's donations. Uh, they, a lot, and most of it's building supplies, which there's probably some market in that on eBay. I just haven't done any investigation into it to see if anything would actually pay off. But they do have, on occasion, miscellaneous things. And that's what I picked up today. I kind of went over a little bit earlier, but I will go back over it in front of this camera. I picked up three games. This Seen It, the DVD game, Sports, powered by ESPN. Most of it is there. I mean, it, I, I'm gonna have to go through it and take the content list and look it over. The, the DVD seemed to be in pretty good condition, but the important thing are these little game pieces. These are little metal game pieces. There's a tennis racket, a ball mitt, there's a little NASCAR, a football. Those alone will recoup the cost that I paid for the game. I saw people selling the two dice. They're kind of a oddly shaped dice specific for the game. 
You know, it's these little bitty pieces that people will lose. They get sucked up by the vacuum cleaner, eaten by the dog, whatever. There's all the cards in it. Like I said, it, it was in pretty good condition. And even if there, it was damaged beyond, sometimes you get more more return on the actual pieces than the games themselves as a whole. Especially when you're selling it used. There's Seen It DVD game. This is just a standard edition. And you know, I did have some damage to the instruction sheet there. I don't know if you can see that hole. But other than that, these have different game pieces because it's more theater, movie related. It's got a little popcorn, a little movie reel, a movie projector, and a clapper, clapper board. And, you know, like I said, if I... I could I could probably get what I I should be able to get what I paid for the game out of just the pieces alone if I wanted to piece part of it out. That's why I don't mind picking up board games as long as they're cheap enough. I think this one, the last one I picked up for two dollars. This one here was two dollars. They probably saw the word DVD and thought, oh yeah. Well, this one, this is Trivial Pursuit DVD Pop Culture Two. Picked it up for $1.50. And I mean, it's got what appears to be all the cards. They probably marked it down. There's the instruction sheet. It's probably cheaper than the other one because of the way the all the pieces were thrown in there. And I'm just gonna have to go over the go over the content list just to make sure that everything is there before I list it complete otherwise you know these little pie pieces i don't know if you can see those there you know people are coming up missing those all the time here's the actual game pieces as you can see the game pieces to this are a little bit different there's a record a peace sign there's a big boot and it's got pieces that's this particular game that's where the pieces slide in is through those little slots and of course the little travel gnome like it's not it's not going to zoom in on it but anyway i think i did i think i'm going to end up doing pretty good on these for a buck 50 like i said i should be able to at least recoup with the selling the pieces alone if i find out that it's not all there Something that, you know, I've looked at comps for. I just don't know a lot about them, but I thought I'd pick up pick it up anyway. I got this Spalding tennis racket. It looks pretty old, come with a case. This one, it didn't have a price on it. I'll, I'll probably try to clean it up a little bit, but not much. I mean, it's obvious the handle is pretty, uh, the tape is pretty much coming off, but, you know, people that play tennis, They'll retape those. But I picked up that one for three dollars, and I picked up this print series one ten JR. You know, like I said, they're used. This one I got for five. We'll see. I mean, I'm not. I, I haven't done much in the way of sporting equipment. I put a few things out on my store. Haven't had a ton of luck on it, but like I said, I just thought I'd give it a shot and and see why well, I was willing to take a lot. Sometimes you have to just kind of test the market. Okay, the next thing, I don't do a ton of VHSs. I picked up this box, and let's see, there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, 23, 24... There's 24 in there. These are all National Geographic VHS tapes. And most of them seem to be in pretty good condition. This one looks like the something got a hold of the, the case there and tried to eat that. Maybe some more dog or something. But um, there's a couple of bite marks there. That's the only one that's real in 
that's one in the worst condition but this location their their vhs is they're doing for 50 cents today so i saw these and they're sitting in these these totes what i say there's 24 in there and then there's another 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, 24, 25. There's 25 in here. So I, there were 50 of them total, which is kind of funny because her original math just wasn't adding up. I asked her how much she would, if she would sell me the, them as a lot. And she said 15 per case. Well, 15 per case, and they're 50 cents a piece. There's 25 in there. What does that figure figure out in your head? I mean, 25 times 50 would be 14 and a half, right? No, 12 and a half dollars. So she's actually going to charge me higher for buy them in a lot so i was like let's just do 25 per for the for the whole lot we'll call it even so that's what we did so yeah it's averaging out, out about you know 40 to 50 cents a tape and i'm really hoping i can at least double my money on that but we'll see okay so i believe oh no there was a few other things i picked up from the restore Another VHS tape, Sahara with Brooke Shields. I don't know. Maybe I get five bucks out of it. And this, you know, I don't know. I have to. It's got the product key. It's actually Office Home Studio Home and Student 2007 Windows, or Office, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Note. We'll see what happens with that one. I'll be right back. My wife had come down and wanted to ask a few questions, so thank you for your patience with that. Back at my Restore Hall, the Gun Digest. This was this is a 1992 46 annual edition. I have no idea what I'm going to get out of it, but you know, 50 cents a book for for the the soft covers there. Uh, it has pretty much, I mean, it has a lot of information as far as weapons and everything else in here. So I thought, you know, there are gun collectors out there that might be interested in this. This is the Gun Digest Book of Firearms Assembly Disassembly Part 3 Rim Fire Rifles. I don't know if you can see this. I mean, it's got pretty cool images in there and I, I'm just assuming that it walks you through what you need to know to assemble and disassemble disassemble rimfire rifles this was you know I didn't even get a chance to see when this was actually um, printed but let's see I am not brushed up on my my Roman numerals, so it looks old. Well, it looks like it, it, it it's no older than 1980 because the introduction was written and signed J.B. Wood, Rain Tree House, Corbin, Kentucky, April 1980. So it's it's got some age to it. I it's really hard for me to talk about things that have age to it in the 80s because i was actually i graduated high school in 87 so this one here this is the gun digest book of firearms assembly disassembly part four center fire rifles like i said there's there's going to be some gun collectors uh, out there that are just dying to get their hands on those books and if you know any of them tell them to look up my store dart store and they can be purchased there Okay. Next, I went to another. I went to actual thrift store, and this thrift store was a new one. I I've, 
I knew it was there. I hadn't. I just hadn't ventured up there to get stop by. So since I was in the area, I decided to go ahead and stop in and see what they had. Just had a little bit of time before I was meeting my wife for lunch. So I'll show you what I picked up. Schlossbrow Regendorf. I really just thought it was cool. It's a little drink glass shaped like a boot. You can see it's it's advertisement there, and I don't know. It's got some writing up there at the top. So we'll see. It was, it was a. It, it, this was labeled ninety nine cents. I have to tell you, the well, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. This one here, just because of the subject matter, I don't know if you can see that. It is Apollo 11, July 20th, 1969. That's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. And then it's got images of, it looks like the astronauts. And I don't know if this is going to be one of those cups that when you fill it up, you know, back in the day, they had these cups that when you got filled them with liquid and they got cold or something, they would actually... But then the image would appear. I don't know if this is one of those or not. But I just thought it was cool. You can see, you can really see the depiction of the astronauts there inside the glass. Not so clear on the out the outside. I mean, it's real faint there. But the cool thing when you look through the glass, and it's hard to see that when you look through the picture of the moon, you can actually see the astronauts inside there, the way they did the glass. But anyway, it was labeled ninety nine cents. So I thought that was pretty cool. Next thing I picked up was some clothes, and this is me. I put a list together out on my website on women's clothing that is doing well on eBay. And really, my criteria was I wanted to find clothes that could fetch anywhere between fifteen, you know, around the fourteen fifteen dollar mark and up. So I put I, I did some research. I put a list out there on my website. If you want to go check it out, winbydoing.com. And this is this one. I'm not. Let me double check if this one. I, I just. If you do check out that list and you find that there's inconsistencies in my investigation, please let me know. But this one. This one may have been one that didn't quite make my list, but I bought it anyway. This was a Eddie Bauer, and really I, I picked it up. It's a double X, and I really got it because it was striped. I, I think I think the stripes are going to work. The next one, these I know, maybe not the particular pattern. Actually, you know this one. This is so funny because these are I, these are a couple that I bought on a whim that I, I didn't even have a clue. But I knew that, you know, I see a lot of paisleys and floral prints are doing well. So I went, this is a um, Croft and Barrow. It's a 3X. It's, it seems to be really good condition. I know it's, it's a little bit heavier material. It's long sleeve. This was a... This is more of a win buy, so we'll see what happens. This one, Dress Barn. I saw a lot of on Dress Barn, and when I when I looked at the Dress Barn, one of the things I noticed was free flowing shirts and and florals. So this one happens to be a three X. And when I when I specify different patterns and stuff, that's just what I noticed. Like I said, this fit both criteria, so this is kind of going to kind of test to see if that list I put out there is actually working. This is Lane Bryant. It seemed like Lane Bryant. Uh, you know, all the larger. I know it's 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 clothing for larger sizes but the larger the sizes did even better but i don't know if you can see that it's kind of free-flowing it's a solid color but it's got some little 
I don't want to call them polka dots, but it's a little bit textured there. But it's a Lane Bryant 2628W. So I think I think I'm gonna do do well with that. This next one is a which one was this? Oh, you know what? I this one wasn't even on my list. I just bought it because the I thought I liked the pattern. Not necessarily for me. I don't think it brings out the color in my eyes the way it should. Oh, well, maybe it does. You guys will have to tell me. But I went in and picked that one up. It did, by the way, was White Stag. I think I, I said that. I guess I could pull comps on that while I'm sitting here just to see. And by the power of internet. Yeah, that that one's probably not gonna do do so well, but we'll we'll see. I should be able to at least recoup my my money on it. Just sometimes when you're in a hurry, you just pull the trigger and hope for the best, and we'll see. I'll probably put it on for I don't know nine nine nine. We'll see. Okay. This one here is just a white. It's got, it's, it's almost sheer except for the, the side. Oh, sorry about that, folks. Like my, my camera is going crazy. I don't know if you can see that. It's a long sleeve, kind of sheer Lane Bryant. It's a 22, 24, and it's, it seems to be in pretty decent condition. I really should now this one I have no idea I mean it is another Lane Bryan it's 1820 and it is a black short sleeve and it looks like a leather or I, I can't tell if it's pleather or leather let's see if it tells me on the on the tag it is rayon nylon spandex Is not going to tell me. Rayon with, okay, the front is 100% rayon with polyurethane coating, lining 100% polyester. So it's probably leather. But I know in the picture there, I mean on the video, it looks like an odd color, but it's actually, I guess it's just a, the the way the light's catching off of it. But it's it's all black, and hopefully I can my pictures will show a truer color. Oh, and the next thing, I had no idea on this. I, I don't know if anybody does collector spoons, but I really, this was just a blind purchase. I pulled the trigger on, it was only 99 cents, but it was, it was more because of the subject matter on it. I'm gonna pull up, pull it up right now. Collector spoons. Collecting spoons, it seemed like back in you know the 70s, 80s, it seemed like that was a big thing to do. When you when you traveled, everywhere you went, you picked up a spoon. Or you know, a lot of people did. So this one happens to be the US Space and Rocket Center. And I don't see, I don't see any comps on it. But when you, when you look at spoons themselves, I mean, you're seeing anywhere from nine bucks down to two two dollars, a dollar, couple dollars. But I'm thinking more that I'll catch the attention of maybe some, you know, people that collect space memorabilia. So we'll see what happens. It was. It was tagged at 99 cents. Now, the story. I get I get in there, and 
First of all, when I went to check out, it was taking a little bit of time. She had a call, so she had to take that call to ring me up. It was fifty percent off on closed days. That's why I didn't mind. I, I, everything, everything there, I paid buck, buck and a half to, to two dollars. That was my ending price. But because she had rung everything up, including the spoon, the glasses. She didn't want to back that out, so she went ahead and gave everything to me 50% off. So the glass are 50 cents a piece. The Apollo 11 glass, 50 cents. I, I think I'm going to do okay with them. They might be more long haul items where they're going to sit in my inventory for, inventory for a while. But who knows? I mean, I just, just the other day, I guess I could go, go through that. I was going to do another, well, I'll just do another video of what's what's been selling, but things are things are doing pretty they're they're doing good. At least for this small seller. I'm I really consider myself a small seller just getting the game within the last couple months. But I've been doing lots of research, doing you know, doing the same thing y'all are doing, watching YouTube videos, watching, you know, reading what's out there on the you know folks blogs trial and error a lot of things i do i just i pull the trigger on and just hope that i'm doing well which you know some people say that's kind of crazy you shouldn't be doing that but there's been quite a few items that i've done really well on as far as profit margins that even my wife's like why the hell would somebody be buying that i mean who buys stuff like that and i'm like you know what there's somebody out there and the reason that's why i'm buying to put on ebay is because I know there's somebody out there that wants it. But anyway, I only got a few of the items that were actually on my list that I put out. I'm going to, if you want to check out that list, www.winbydoing.com. I put the the URLs down in my disc, my bio description, whatever you, whatever it's it's called there. Go ahead and feel free to check it out. Um, drop me a message if you tend to agree disagree your successes if the if the list was useful because i plan on doing some more but i want to get in, right information out there some good information so if you're finding that you're not making profits off that list i put out there drop me a line and let me know that way i can try to refine my search even more because i want everybody else to be just as successful as i am being with this but anyway, that is at it for now i've got lots of stuff to list and it looks like i'll be um, taking pictures and putting lists putting my listings together all afternoon but it was fun but i gotta go peace out we'll catch you later